This video is about a medical condition that affects millions of people around the world, urethral stricture disease. I do this video by special request of No Falls Metal 76. It is an important topic in urology because a little damage causes a lot of trouble. So far, no ingenious solution can be offered by urology. But let's see what we can do. First of all, what is urethral stricture disease? Simply put, it's a narrowing of the urethra, the tube that carries urine from the bladder to the outside of the body. This narrowing can occur anywhere in the urethra and can cause difficulty in urination. Urology differentiates between anterior and posterior strictures. A typical location would be back in the urethra. We call these posterior strictures. This is because any kind of trauma to the perineum easily results in urethral damage with consecutive scarring. So-called straddle injuries are very common, like when falling onto the upper bar of the frame of a bicycle. There are many other reasons why someone might develop urethral stricture disease. These include all sorts of injuries to the urethra, like inserting objects like wires, feathers and other stuff, infection, inflammation or even as a result of certain medical procedures. Men are more commonly affected than women and older men are at a higher risk. Women have a much shorter urethra, therefore it is more protected against problems. Some of the symptoms of urethral stricture disease include difficulties starting urination, a weak urine stream, straining during urination and increased urgency to urinate. These symptoms can be uncomfortable and even painful and can significantly impact a person's quality of life. These symptoms may sound familiar to you as they also may be present with an enlarged prostate. So how is urethral stricture disease diagnosed? When I get a suspicion, I will perform an examination of the urinary flow, since this is very easy to do. The patient voids into a special collection device which will depict the flow per second as a graph. Strictures have a very typical appearance with a straight line instead of a curve. X-ray images or a cystoscopy may also be appropriate to further break down the problem. Treatment for urethral stricture disease can be a major problem as the condition has a tendency to relapse. It also very much depends on the location of the stricture and on its length. Short strictures may be incised, but there is a high chance of relapse. It is also possible to remove a small stricture, which would be an open operation. During the past decade, plastic reconstruction with buccal mucosa has become widely used. The results are quite good, but overall, the problem lies within the wound healing capabilities of the body. Whenever there is tissue damage, the body will react with eventual scarring. If this occurs in tubes like the urethra, it will lead to constriction. The most complicated strictures are those resulting from radiation as a side effect of radiation therapy. Urethral dilatation is something I only recommend under certain circumstances. This involves inserting a special catheter to widen the narrowed part of the urethra. On the long run, it will cause the problem to get worse with risks for strictures in hitherto unaffected areas. Urethral stents are also available. They keep the urethra open permanently, but a lot of side effects are linked to them, so they can only be recommended under special circumstances. My hope for the future are advances in tissue engineering. Already 20 years ago, it was possible to put in an entirely new urethra made from cadaver matrix with cultivated urethelium from the patient. Unfortunately, Progress is slow here and I am not certain when this will be available as a standard. At least nothing much happened during the last 20 years. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.